Welcome to this overview of PXF Deep Defocus. Note that Pixel Fudger version 3 now has three nodes about defocus. There is PXF Deep Defocus for a deep image sources. There is also PXF Z Defocus for regular RGBA images with a depth pass. And there's also PXF I Defocus for quick and dirty variable defocuses based on some random alpha or control channel. There's a separate video about PXF ID focus and PXF Z defocus. This video will talk about PXF deep defocus. Let's have a look at a real example here. So I have this image that was rendered with a 3D package. Before we dive into deep uh, renders, let's see what happens if we do not use a deep render and just do a regular depth of field pass on this. So I want to create some defocus here to make the image uh, more photorealistic. So uh, if we don't use our deep render, let's see what happens. I'm going to bring in PXF Z defocus. Under the hood, PXF Z defocus uses the regular Z defocus node from Foundry. So the result will be identical uh, visually. However, uh, Z defocus as a easier user interface to navigate and also we can use uh, lens emulation to do the math about the size of our defocus. So visually these two will look the same. This one is easier to use so we're going to use the PXF one. So let's get rid of our Z defocus, keep the PXF one connected to our source. Let's look at our image here. So if we look at the layers we do have a depth uh, channel in our depth layer and if we look here we have some values the chair in the foreground is about half a meter away this one's about two meters away the wall is about eight meters away so all of this makes sense let's go back to our rgba image turn the exposure back to normal put our viewer on our zd focus everything is out of focus let's go into the main zd focus tab we have an autofocus control here Let's move it to the wall. That's where we want the focus to be. There we go. This is a lot of defocus. We could adjust it with the size parameter, but let's use lens simulation instead. So we are going to set up our lens simulation. Turn that on. Our scene is set to meters because this particular render was built in meters. The lens we're trying to emulate is a 25 millimeter lens. Our film back or our sensor was 32 millimeters wide. And we are trying to emulate a lens that is f1.2. Here we go. So this is our render and we can compare that to our full 3D defocus uh, render. So this render here on the right has been rendered with defocus turned on in the 3D software. Ever, and this is our own version here. Uh, of course, that started from the non defocused image. So if we compare the two, they look very similar. So that means our math and our f-stop is good. However, there is a pretty big difference here on the edge of the foreground chair. So let's have a look. If we look at this, our own version, we can see that bits of the legs of the chair in the background are missing. So if we compare this to the real render, we're missing some parts of the background. Same here on the left side of the foreground chair, we're missing some stuff. The reason that's happening is because as the foreground chair becomes more and more out of focus, the edge becomes more and more transparent and it should reveal whatever is behind the chair. The 3D package has the stuff that's behind the chair. We don't because in this render, of course, there's nothing here besides the foreground chair. The background bits are not included in this image. So no matter which software we're going to use, which technology, we cannot rebuild the missing legs of the chair, the missing floorboards and so on. So we have a limitation due to the fact that this image does not include the background stuff and will always be stuck by interpolating. So Foundry's uh, ZD focus node tries to 
do some infilling to recreate the missing colors but of course it never will be accurate we'll never recreate really what the legs and the floorboards uh, should look like so we have a problem here one solution would be to render these two images separately so turn off the chair in one render render uh, only the background then turn off everything but the chair render that in a separate render with an alpha channel they focus them separately and combine them together for a simple scene like this this might work because the camera is not moving this the furniture is not moving it should be fairly easy to split the scene into two however for a more complex scene where the camera is moving a lot stuff is moving a lot quite a bit then you might have a hard time splitting the foreground from the background so one solution could be to render this whole scene as a deep rgba image which i've done here so here's my deep rgba render let's inspect our deep buffer using a uh, deep two points here we go so our deep buffer goes in the deep input and i imported the camera from my 3d software into nuke and i connect that to the camera input and if i put my viewer on it now i can see a point cloud in 3d of my scene so you can uh, see here that my scene is complete i have those legs in my deep image which i don't in my non-deep image i have the entire desk i have the entire wall and so on be careful not all deep images are created equal depending which software generated the deep image you may not have the stuff in the background and our deep defocus will fail if we do not have the stuff that we're after in the background so inspect your deep image with the deep points and make sure the stuff you need is included in your deep buffer if it wasn't included in the deep buffer it would look something like this let's simulate it with a deep merge like so and i'm gonna turn off the hidden samples so notice that a lot of 3d software will render stuff like this so it is still a deep image but all the stuff that's in the background if it's hidden by stuff in the foreground will not be included in an effort to keep the file size low so notice i'm missing good chunks of the desk i'm missing bits of the wall i do not have the legs of the chairs here so all of this is still a deep image but it doesn't include the bits that i want the stuff that's behind the stuff in the foreground that will get revealed when i make the foreground more transparent with my defocus so, so make sure to inspect your deep buffer so this is what your deep buffer should look like it should be complete so now that i have confirmed that I, ha that I have a full deep buffer we can use pxf deep defocus let's bring that in here we go connect it to my deep image put my viewer on it and before we set up the defocus we need to set up the deep slices so notice the warning here please adjust uh, deep slices i'm going to go to the deep slices tab and click view deep slices and notice here that everything is the same color this means that everything is on the same slice what do we mean by slice to achieve the result we're after what we're doing under the hood is a bunch of deep crops a series of deep crops splitting the image into foreground mid ground and background and defocusing each slice separately using the built-in z defocus node from foundry in order to set up the amount of slices properly we have this view deep slices button here and we can inspect the slices with colors right now everything's on the same slice everything is the same color we need to tell uh deep defocus what's the span of our scene how far are things and how close are things to the camera so we're going to use the far pick picker to tell uh, deep defocus how far is the farthest item so i'm going to pick the corner here of the room now i can see that there's two colors because there is two slices so all the foreground is on the blue slice and all the background is on the red slice often this may be enough but in our case it won't be because now when the foreground chair becomes uh, transparent 
we won't be able to reveal the background chairs because they are on the same slice. We want to split them so they're on separate slices. So we're going to set our near pick to the foreground chair and we're going to add an extra slice or two. So if we set the slices to three, now the, uh, the background chairs are on a separate slice. We could even set it to four or even five slices. So now you can see we've got five different colors. So the foreground is on the blue slice and then a bit farther behind is on the red slice and then further behind is on the green and purple and yellow slice. So all of these colors will be defocused separately and treated as different layers, if you will. So let's turn off our view deep slices. Go back to the deep defocus and move our autofocus on the wall. The wall is the part we want in focus, the blackboard. So let's focus on the blackboard. Right now our defocus is driven by the size knob. If you just want a quick and dirty version, you can do that. Let's go back to uh, lens simulation and enable lens simulation and set the same settings. So meters, we're using a 25 mil lens. We want f1.2 and our film back was 32 mils wide. And let's have a look. Here we go. So this looks pretty much identical to our Z defocus version, but let's compare. And you can see that mostly it's the same, but there is a big upgrade here on the edge. If you compare the old version without deep, we don't have the legs here. And if we switch to the deep version, we do have the legs because these legs are included in the deep buffer in the background. Same thing for the ground here uh, and so on and so on. So this is much closer to our real uh, depth of field render from the 3D package. So if we look at the 3D package here, we see the same amount of stuff on the edge here. So this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. However, there is still some things to be careful about because internally we're essentially slicing our image with uh, five deep crops. We need to stitch the crops together and that stitching requires some amount of compromise. So let's open the group here, control enter and see what happens underneath. Let's move this here so it makes more sense. And we've got essentially five slices because we've specified five deep slices here. And we've got the foreground that becomes defocused with the Z defocus here. And then a, a slice farther back, another, another one, and another one, and another one. So we've got essentially five layers now that are being defocused separately and are combined together with regular merges. All of these overs are fine, but you might end up with problems like this, where you have a slice coming in the middle of an object. Here we have a slice coming in the middle of our desk. If we look at the slices separately, we've got the background slice that becomes transparent on the edge here. And we've got the foreground slice that's also transparent on the edge. When we combine them together, two transparent objects together do not become opaque. And we do have a, a sliver of transparency. When, when we put it on top of something else, we can see the background chair through the hole here. If that happens, you have multiple possible solutions here. Uh, the quick solution would be to, instead of combining the slices using an over, in the deep slices parameters, you can choose to use something else like this joint over, for example, and this will uh, help with this quite a bit. However, this may create artifacts on uh, semi-transparent areas. So if we compare here between over and disjoint over, notice that it's not completely identical. Also, uh, it's not, it still might not be perfect if the deep crop reveals objects that are hidden underneath uh, the, the desk, for example. So this is always going to be a compromise. Another solution would be to minimize the number of slices or move the slices by playing with the Z near and Z far param parameter to move the uh, edges of the slices in areas where you don't see the problem. 
Alternately, if you, all your artifacts on the edges of the slices are always dark, you can use double merge to max. If the artifacts are always bright, uh, you, can all, you can do double merge in min and minimize your artifacts like this. Note that this will double the amount of slices and make your render times slower. So here we go. I'm pretty happy with this result here. I have a minimal amount of artifacts and I have a defocus that's very close to the real defocus from the 3D package. And I do have the bits that should be revealed as the foreground uh, becomes transparent. Let's walk through the controls together to make sure we didn't leave anything behind. So First tab, deep defocus, filter, we've got a choice of Gaussian, defocus, and bokeh. I cover this in detail in my Z defocus video. I invite you to watch this video for more information about this. Resolution is uh, uh, full res, half res, quarter res, one eighth res. This is for faster rendering, so you can make the preview uh, quicker, but of course it's lower resolution use this instead of lowering the resolution in your viewer because uh, if you use the lower resolution in your viewer the pickers for autofocus and z far and z near will fail so instead of making your script faster with the viewer make it faster with the resolution setting inside deep defocus the focus plane is of course the area that's in focus that's the one we picked with autofocus so in our case that's how far the wall is to the camera. The size is grayed out because we're using lens simulation. If we did not use lens simulation, this is how we would uh, tell deep defocus how much uh, defocus to apply. So of course, if we have a smaller value here, the foreground will become more in focus. Of course, we don't want to set it manually. We want to let uh, deep defocus figure it out using our lens uh, parameters here. Max size is the upper limit on how much a single pixel can be defocused. Uh, this will need to be adjusted up if you have stuff that comes really close to camera or if you have a very very wide aperture or a big size. Aspect ratio is the aspect ratio of the bokeh. Again I've covered this in ZD Focus. Set it to 0.5 if you have a 2 to 1 anamorphic image for example. Mix enables you to mix the result with the original image, just like any mix knob in Nuke. Uh, deep slices enables you to set up how many slices you want. In our case, we've set up five slices. You can view the slices by turning on view deep slices. Z near is how far is your closest object in the scene. Z far is how far your farthest object in the scene. Include zero to Z near will include the stuff from the lens to the first slice so if you have stuff coming really close to camera and you don't want to lose it in the deep crops enable this z far to infinity is the same thing for the uh, far background so if you have stuff that's beyond the last slice you want to include it in that last slice enable include z far to infinity merge operation is how do you want to blend the slices together by default, it's set to over. Uh, often you want to switch it to disjoint over if you see transparency on the edges of the slices. You may want to experiment with the other modes depending on your specific shot to try to minimize artifacts. So for example, plus will add all the um, slices together. Max will max all the slices together. This wouldn't make sense for a scene like this, but if you have a scene with rain or snow or something like that, it might make sense to do that. Double merge uh, doesn't do anything unless you turn on fix artifacts. Fix artifacts will create two sets of slices. So in our case, we'll create two sets of five slices, offset the two sets by one half slice and combine them using a max or a min. This is a bit of a hack. This is uh, an option to try to minimize artifacts on the uh, boundaries of different slices. Uh, make sure to only turn this on if you absolutely need it. This will double your render time because you end up doubling the number of slices. Lens simulation is to enable photo real uh, depth of field. This is where, of course, where we would set our scene scale, uh, the focal length of our lens, f-stop and the size of our 
film back and the bokeh tab is where we would specify the attributes of our custom bokeh if we were to use the bokeh filter i've covered this in detail in the pxf zd focus uh, video i invite you to watch that video if you want more information about the custom bokeh custom bokehs can also be fed through the bokeh input again i've covered this in the z defocus um, video lastly we do have a mask input so if you need to limit the effect of your deep defocus only to some area of the frame of course you could create an alpha channel let's say with a roto for example and mask your deep defocus with that mask and now only a portion of the frame is defocused and the rest is the original frame here lastly note that uh, because of the nature of deep defocus we need deep pixels on input but the output will not be deep unfortunately it will be a regular rgba image so this is similar to going through the uh, deep to image node in that regards so there you go this was an overview of the deep defocus node i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video goodbye